Hello, this is Pastor Frank from the Balsam Bible Chapel and the Old Scenic Community Church. And this week's message is Pass the Baton. And if you want to follow along, I'm going to be looking uh, primarily at 2 Timothy in the New Testament, 2 Timothy chapter 2. But passing the baton. Um, I first began to think about this in early May at our grandson's baby dedication uh, back in Wisconsin. The pastor spoke on passing the baton and, and um, a very, very good message. And that's back, been in the back of my mind. And then I've been um, at our Village Missions Conference that uh, I'm back from now. I've been gone for a couple of weeks. But uh, the subject of passing the baton was mentioned uh, quite a bit. And in the uh, latest uh, uh, Village Missions magazine in the beginning it has this it's part of a paragraph from our director and he says village missions has passed the baton from one generation to another for 75 years and this year is village missions 75th anniversary um, we are building on the wisdom and experience of the previous generations while moving forward with committed faith and perseverance we believe Christ loves people in rural communities and longs for them to hear his good news. And so there again, another reference to the passing of the baton. I was doing some reading in, uh, online in the Washington Post uh, a few years back had an article about the passing of the baton in the uh, 4 by 100 race and the the, the misses that took place. Let me read part of this. It said, quote, in the 1912 Olympics, the first four by 100 was, first, was the first time a heavily favored U.S. team did not make the final. The four men had won individual sprint medals, and they ran what would have been a world record in their semifinal, but they were disqualified for passing the baton outside the exchange zone. And there would be more disqualifications that this article would talk about, but um, dropped batons, uh, batons that were slipped out of the hands. Many times they would pass them, but they were out of the, the uh, zone where they were allowed to do that. It said in the 1990s, Brian Lewis found out he would be running in the qualifying heat just 90 minutes before the start. He was supposed to pass the baton to Tim Montgomery, but Montgomery missed his start and left too early. When he was almost to the end of the exchange zone with no baton in his hand, Montgomery slowed down and looked back just in time to see Lewis flailing at full speed, trying to catch up, run past, and almost hit him with his elbow. Montgomery ducked and never got the baton. In another article from a different source, this one is dated in August 21st of 2008, it said, quote, both the U.S. men's and women's 4x100 relays suffered baton drops during handoffs tonight in Beijing and failed to advance to the finals of the event. It's the first time the American men won't be competing in the Olympic relay finals since the Taft administration. For the women, it's their first absence in the finals since 1948. The drops continue a disastrous Olympic track meet for the Americans. Tyson Gay, who was involved in the men's faulty exchange, will leave Beijing without running in a final. On the women's side, Lauren Williams now has two Olympic baton drops to, on her resume. She and Marion Jones had a slip-up in the 2004 Olympics, a blunder that cost the U.S. a gold medal, end quote. And so this is uh, a significant part of that race, and it's something that is often messed up. The runners are not only responsible for how they run their race or their lap, but they are responsible for how they pass the baton on to the next runner. Well, if you have your Bible and, and are following along in 2 Timothy chapter 2, the Bible says in verse 1, the Apostle Paul now is writing to Timothy, and he says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong, my son, my son. Uh, Timothy was Paul's spiritual son. Paul had led Timothy to Christ. In Acts chapter 16, Timothy began traveling with Paul. Verse 2, Paul continues to Timothy. He says, The things which you have heard from me among many witnesses, the, commit these to faithful men 
who will be able to teach others also. Now, Paul was coming to the end of his life. He was coming to the end of his race. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, Paul writes to Timothy and beginning at verse 6, he says, I am already being poured out as a drink offering. The time of my departure is at hand. The time for my death is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. The Apostle Paul mentored Timothy. There was and there was to be a passing of the spiritual baton on. Uh, Paul passed it on to Timothy. Timothy is to pass it on to, quote, faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So there is the passing of this baton of faith. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 9, the Apostle Paul writes, he says, These things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, do them. This is a mentorship verse. The things which you have seen and heard and learned in me, then do them. I thank God for the mentors in my life. A man that I refer to as Uncle Harry and how he mentored me, a, a young, a, a teenager, as we hunted together and fished together. And he was a retired farmer. So there was a big ga a gap in age between us. But he was, um, he was a fishing companion. He was a hunting companion. He was my Sunday school teacher. And he mentored me in the Lord. I, am so, I will be eternally thankful to him, to God, for him. Then there was my Uncle George who mentored me as a pastor, especially. Uncle George had pastored, and he was a, an older man, and he was a, very much a man of prayer. And in my first church, Uncle George wrote a letter to me. It's like a Paul writing to Timothy. And uh, this was back in March of 1988, and I still have this. And I have this, actually, this part of the letter I have written in the cover, inside cover of Pretty much every Bible I own. But let me read this part that Uncle George wrote to me as he mentored me as a young pastor. He said, quote, Jesus teaches us that we do nothing in ourselves. It must be done by his spirit. The Holy Spirit was sent to form the church. We must become dependent on him as little children. He reads our hearts and always knows our needs, but we must go to him in prayer. He waits for our expression to him in faith. Jesus prayed all night. Prayer is the closest place we can get to God. And the more time you spend in prayer, the more profitable and powerful your ministry will be, end quote. And that has spoken to me all these years. You know, the Bible says about Abel in, in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 11, that though he is dead, yet he still speaks. Now, Uncle George has been with the Lord for many years but he still speaks to me. God using him in, in encouraging me. He mentored me in, as a young pastor. And then there was my dad, and I've spoken about my dad a lot, especially, uh, and the uh, things that he taught me about what it looks like to, to, to have the Holy Spirit uh, filling you. Well, Paul mentored Timothy, and Timothy was to mentor others. In verse 3, Paul says to Timothy here, he says, You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, Paul taught Timothy how to do this. Uh, Paul lived this out before Timothy. It was part of Paul's mentoring to live this out. It was part of passing the baton to the next generation. Verse 4. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself in the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. So Paul uses three examples here. He uses the, the soldier in verse 4 the athlete in verse 5, and the hardworking farmer in verse 6. Each a unique aspect to what he's trying to, 
pass on to Timothy. But let's focus on the athlete, verse 5. And in keeping with the theme of this message, let's consider the runner, a runner. Um, because life is a race. Again, Paul said to Timothy, he said, The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. In, in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. The athlete that competes according to the rules in a relay must not only run them well themselves, run their lap, but they also must properly hand off the baton to the next runner. That's part of the race. Passing the baton to the next runner is part of the race. Verse 7 here, Paul says, Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Consider. Pay attention to this, Paul said. In the New Living Translation, it says, Think about what I am saying. The Lord will help you understand all these things. Well, that was the New Testament. Let's go to the Old Testament. Let's go back to the book of Deuteronomy and Judges. First, the book of Deuteronomy. Joshua had followed Moses. Moses was the leader of the children of Israel. He led them out of Egypt, uh, across the Red Sea, through the wilderness. And so uh, Joshua was mentored by Moses. Matter of fact, the Lord told Moses to mentor Joshua. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, after letting Moses know that he would not be taking the children of Israel into the promised land, the Lord told Moses in verse 38, this is Deuteronomy 1, 38, he said, Joshua, the son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall go in there, encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. So the Lord tells Moses, you take Joshua and you encourage him, because he is going to lead that next generation. Deuteronomy chapter 3, I begin at verse 23. Deuteronomy 3, Beginning at verse 23, Moses writes, he says, Then I pleaded with the Lord at that time, saying, O Lord God, you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do anything like your works and your mighty deeds? I pray, let me cross over and see the good land beyond the Jordan, those pleasant mountains and Lebanon. He says, but the Lord was angry with me on your account and would not listen to me. So the Lord said to me, enough of that. Speak no more to me of, of the matter. And then Moses was told by the Lord, go up to the top of Pisgah and lift your eyes toward the west, the north, the south, and the east. Behold it with your eyes, for you shall not cross over this Jordan. Verse 28, now here's, there's significant, uh, significance here. But command Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him, for he shall go before you, or shall, be go, shall go over before this people. He shall cause them to inherit the land which you will see. So Moses is not going to be able to go over into that new land, but he is to encourage and strengthen and command Joshua. And, and Moses did a good job of mentoring Joshua. Moses did a good job of commanding Joshua and of encouraging him, verse 28. But something happened. Along the way somewhere, the baton was dropped. It was not passed on properly to the next generation. And so coming to Judges, chapter 2, Judges chapter 2, beginning at verse 7, the Bible says, So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua and who had seen all the great works of the Lord which he had done for Israel. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died. He died when he was 110 years old. And they buried him within the border of his inheritance, Verse 10, when all that generation had been gathered to their fathers. And in other words, when, when Joshua and all those 
his age, that generation had died. Another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. Somewhere, somehow, in some way, the baton had been dropped. The book of Judges concludes in verse, uh, or chapter 21, verse 25, by saying that everyone did what was right in his own eyes. So failure to pass the baton of faith uh, is what caused Israel to depart from the Lord. Brothers and sisters, failure to pass the baton of faith is why our country is as it is. We are very much aware of our nation's problems and the path down which we are headed. It's because the baton of faith has been dropped. You know, at one time we were known as a Christian nation. Not anymore. For whatever reason, for a host of reasons, the baton of faith has not been passed on to the next generation. Again, we are not only responsible for how we run our race, our lap around the track, the track of life, but we are responsible for how we pass the baton on to the next generation. Our number one calling is to pass the baton of faith on to the next generation. And as I have been thinking about my life, I realize I'm running out of time to do that. We're all running out of time to do that. Children and grandchildren, they grow up so fast. The, 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 the amount of time that we have them in their moldable years goes by so fast. We're, we run out of time. And plus, our time can end at any moment. So I'm very conscious of running out of time to mentor the next generation, to pass the baton of faith on to the next generation. Again, Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, And the things which you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Again, Paul mentored Timothy, and Timothy now is to mentor others who will mentor others, and that's the way God designed it. For you ladies, in, in the book of Titus, the Bible says, and this is Titus chapter 2, it says that uh, Paul tells Titus, teach the older women to live in a way that honors God. They should teach the others what is good. They, these older women, should teach others what is good. These older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to live wisely and be pure, to work in their homes, to do good, to be submissive to their husbands, then they will not bring shame on the word of God. In the same way, encourage the young men to live wisely. So there is this passing of the baton of faith on to the next generation. The older ladies are to do that to the younger, uh, younger ladies. And the men are to do that with the young men. Again, I will be eternally thankful for those who have been mentors in my personal life and in my ministry. So there's two questions. Two questions. The first is, are you in the race? Are you in the race? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, examine yourselves. That's something we all should do. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? See that racing term there? A disqualification? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, If anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. And so we must be conscious of how, first of all, whether we're even in the race. Test ourselves, examine ourselves. Am I really a Christian? It's so easy to say I am, but am I really? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Are you in the race? So that's the first question. And it's an obvious one. It's a basic one. Are you in the race? And if you are, 
If you are a brother or sister of Christ and to me, if you are in the race, then the second question is, are you passing the baton of your faith on to the next generation? Or does our faith end with us? The reasoning that some aren't passing the baton on to the next generation, it's, it's like they have this thinking, let somebody else do it. Let somebody else pass the baton of faith on to the next generation. I'm too busy. Or I really don't have the interest. Or I don't know how. Or on and on and on we can go with the excuses. Again, the reason our country is as it is is because too many people have dropped the baton of faith. Not passing it on to the next generation. Expecting somebody else to do it. You know, when we think of Jesus' words, well done, good and faithful servant, sometimes it's, I think we limit it. You know, I, I, I'm praying, I'm serving, I'm doing this, and so I'm going to hear Jesus say, well done, good and faithful servant. But let's think about those words in regard to this hugely important thing of passing the baton. When I stand before the Lord on that day to give an account for the things that I have done in my, in my body and in, in the time that he has given me, when it comes to passing the baton on, will he say, well done, Frank? Well done. You not only lived for me, but you did a good job in passing the baton of faith on to the next generation. Well done, good and faithful servant. I repeat this and then I'll close. We are not responsible only for how we run our race, our lap of life. We're not responsible for, only responsible for how we run, but we are responsible for how we pass the baton of faith on to the next generation. Heavenly Father, thank you for those who have passed the baton of faith on to us. And Father, I pray that you would help me and you would help each of my brothers and sisters, that we would not sit back and expect somebody else to pass that on to the next generation, but the Lord, we would be actively, prayerfully involved in passing this faith on to the next generation. Father, I pray for somebody that may be listening to this or watching this who's not even in the race. They're, they're not even a, a Christian. They maybe have thought they were. They, they don't not believe in you, but Lord, they don't have a personal relationship with you. I pray, Father, that you would open the eyes of their understanding to see the difference between just having a head knowledge about you and having you live within them, being their Savior and their Lord. So I pray, Father, for them, that they would see the reality of Jesus and, Lord Jesus, of, of, of what you need to be to them as far as uh, being their Savior, their Lord. And so, Lord, here we are, and our nation is in trouble. Our nation is going down a wrong path. And along the line, the baton has been dropped. Father, I pray that it would not happen with us. There's young people out there. There's, there's people that the Lord need to have an example of a godly person. They need mentoring. They need help. They need encouragement. They need strengthening. Help us, Lord, to have a heart to do that in the time that we have left. I pray in Jesus' name. And I pray for the blessing of those who will be mentored by us. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord bless you, brothers and sisters.